Supervisor Herity. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, I have uh, one board matter, and it's done jointly with Super, uh, Supervisor Cook. Uh, in the past two years, there's been a noticeable increase in panhandling on medians and intersections throughout the county. While there are some who panhandle because they need to, many more take advantage of the generosity of our residents through panhandling rings. Investigation into these rings have proven that many panhandlers in our county are coming from outside the county, even outside the state, attracted by the wealth and generosity of our residents. The board has sought to help panhandlers in need by committing significant portion of the county budget to providing services for those residents who are down on their luck. The board has encouraged residents to direct panhandlers to these county resources, including shelters, food banks, health and job matching services, instead of giving small amounts of money. It is vitally important that we connect those in need with the right services and disincentivize panhandling. Although homelessness in Fairfax County is shrinking, panhandling by roadways is becoming more and more prevalent. In 2017 alone, uh, the Fairfax County Police Department received over 2,100 calls related to panhandling, and many more have been received by district offices. These calls detail traffic issues, concern about panhandler safety, fears of suspicious people at intersections. As a county, we do develop, uh, devote significant resources to helping our residents in need and to keeping our residents safe. Since our last discussion on panhandling, several other Virginia jurisdictions, including the city of Winchester, Clark County, and Frederick County, have responded to this public safety issue through local ordinances that prohibit any direct engagement with cars curb to curb while on medians in intersections. Both those in the restricted area and the motorist can be charged under these ordinances. This proposed ordinance would regulate curb to curb. It would not restrict sidewalks in any way. Our youth advertising, car washes, et cetera, would not be affected. People would still have the opportunity to exercise their First Amendment rights on sidewalks without interacting with those in the curb to curb area, without interacting with motorists. Therefore, Madam Chairman, I move staff prepare a proposed ordinance for curb to curb safety, prohibiting any engagement of pedestrians with cars while on medians or intersections to be discussed by the board at the next public safety committee meeting on September 7th. 17th. In 17th, I'm sorry. In addition, I would like to ask OPA to once again reaffirm the board's commitment to helping our neediest residents through resources that help them and their families for the long term, not just for the day as panhandling might, and encourage all county residents who are looking for ways to help those in need to pass along our county's hotline number and contribute their donations to nonprofits that can help those truly in need. So moved. We have a motion that has been seconded Supervi uh, discussion, Supervisor Cook. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And, and I, I, you know, I hope the board will, will give us this opportunity to, to continue the discussion we started a couple of years ago. Um, you know, at our public safety meeting, um, and I, I can open up some time on the agenda to do that. Uh, we had a good briefing a couple of years ago when the issue was, <laughs> we thought, rather larger than. It has become massively greater. Um, at that time, I'm, uh, there were a few intersections in my district that were affected. Now it's all of Braddock Road, which is the backbone of my district. Uh, it is a public safety issue. It's a hazard. It's dangerous for the people who are doing the panhandling. It's dangerous for drivers. It's dangerous when people stop and then other drivers weave around them to get past them. Um, it is not a good situation and it's only getting worse. Um, and, you know, we hate to see people in need and, and we, we don't want to uh, have them hidden. Um, um, but this is not the right way to bring out the issue. We, we, do need to continue to provide services, um, but then we have uh, we do have those who are, I think, abusing the generosity of our citizens by by we know that there, there are businesses that are panhandling um, industry. Yeah, and and you know that's just that's wrong. Uh, it's dishonest, um, but the effect of our neighborhoods too. Uh, it doesn't. It, when I say doesn't look good, I just don't mean it from an aesthetic standpoint, but. Part of having strong neighborhoods is the, is the perception which becomes the reality of safety and the, the reality that it is a, a good place to live, that's safe for everyone, where all people are taken care of, and that 
perception is 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 damaged um, when there is this panhandling. Um, and I know we, you know we there are there are complications uh, we know in this issue. That's why we've suggested that an ordinance be curb to curb within the curbs, uh, because when we discussed it a couple of years ago, we were all concerned about sidewalks and you know kids advertising car washes and bake sales and other things. That's sidewalks. That's outside the curb, so that would not be restricted. But the issue isn't there. It's the issue of coming into the streets. And, you know, we, we all know that we, we so much, and we celebrate every year, the fire department uh, going out and, and, and raising significant <coughs> funds. Uh, there has to be a way that we can continue to help our firefighters who are doing that great job doing fundraising, but still allow us the other 363 days of the year uh, when that isn't occurring to make sure our neighborhoods are safe. And so uh, this will give us a couple months to be preparing for that discussion. Uh, and we can, we can hear from groups if there are concerns. I, you know, certainly not asking any board member to make a decision today, but I would ask that we, let's bring this item back. Let's have a committee discussion in September. Um, and let's, I hope, take, take the action I think we need to hope to, uh, to need to take to have safety on our roadways. Okay. Supervisor McKay and then yeah, Supervisor I, Linda Smith. Um, it is a significant problem. I have no uh, concerns about having the discussion, but I am a little bit confused because I thought when we last discussed this, it was VDOT right of way that we were talking about. And I, I remember the discussion being you either exclude all activities in the VDOT right of way or you exclude no activities in the VDOT right away. And my understanding from the police is that if people do step into the flow of traffic, that they can take action to get them not out of the median, which I understand this addresses, but if they're standing in the roadway and creating a public safety hazard, the police can deal with that now. So I guess what I'd be looking for at the committee meeting is a little bit of clarity about what other tools we might have. So I think we need to get a complete list of what is available to us. This is the first time I've heard of uh, curb to curb, and it seems to run a little bit contrary to the, the broad information that we got the last time we talked about this. And so if we could just get some clarity on that, um, and also what, if any, role in participation VDOT would have to have on this. I noticed there are two counties in a city, so it's not a city-county thing. There are two counties that have already adopted this. So I'd like to know a little bit more about the the process they went through, what, if any, involvement uh, VDOT had. Um, and I, I think it's a good conversation to have, but it is it is a little bit different. What's being presented here is a little bit different than I remember the discussion, and it may just be my memory, but I thought it was an all-in or all-out in VDOT right away. And clearly the sidewalks are still in VDOT right away, so you would be saying you can do some things in VDOT right away, this part of the right away, but not in this part of the right of way. And I just want to make sure that, you know, passes legal muster and, and is a, an option that we can adopt. So all that background information, of course, will be discussed uh, at that meeting and want to make sure that when we come to the meeting, we come with an ordinance, uh, but we also have a discussion about difference between this ordinance and other things that we may or may not be able to do so that we have the full picture. Supervisor Cook on that. Uh, on, on that point, and I appreciate uh, Supervisor McKay for, for asking that question because my recollection, of course, it's been a couple of years now, my recollection was that while restrictions had to apply right to all, to everyone because it's a free speech issue, that I did not remember a geographical restriction within the right of way. And in fact, that was, as I was talking with Supervisor Herity about this proposal, to me, because I was always concerned about restricting sidewalks, um, and that it had been my impression that we could within the curb. So uh, I think the county attorney, we could ask to, you know, if, if it needs to be closed session, we can do that in September. If it can be an open session, we can do that. Because it was certainly my impression from the presentation that we had that sort of geographically we were okay as long as within whatever place we drew it, it applied to everybody. And, and uh, but I, so I appreciate the question because I think we all want clarity right. and we all want to know what options we have so that if we do take action, um, it can be well thought through and, and appropriate. Uh, we have several folks who have uh, indicated they'd like to speak. Let, let me just say, and I'll just put it right out there, our, some, some of us have a concern about fill the boot. 
uh, which is a you know once a year event. Uh, it's over a weekend. Uh, our fire and rescue department uh, trains actually uh, on the safety uh, for for collecting money uh, for muscular dystrophy, and we frankly are well known throughout the United States for the generosity of our constituents uh, who participate in that. And our fire and rescue uh, individuals stand on the medians or on the sidewalks. Uh, but you know, people do contribute from their from their vehicles, and so if we're going to have, I think that's one of the troublesome parts of this issue. We'd like to do something about you know people who are really you know taking advantage of and abusing the generosity of our of our community, uh, and people who this this you know often is an industry. Uh, you know, they don't they don't live here often. Uh, and uh, you know, and get dropped off, <laughs> you know, at corners, and then pick back up again. You know, these are not people who are living in the woods, you know, close to our neighborhoods. So, um, and and in those cases, indeed, we're trying to encourage people to, you know, to to come to the county. You know, we we have vowed to prevent and end homelessness. We have an office. And we have, you know, a infrastructure to, you know, to try to deal with that. Um, so, those are some of the complexities that I just wanted to put on the table. So, when this comes back to us, uh, I think it's important that our staff, you know, understands, you know, one of those, one of our major concerns, and that is, you know, the fill the boot uh, campaign, and of course, you know, also, you know, kids who are standing on the. They're not collecting from the road, kids who are, you know, advertising, you know, a car wash or something like that. But in the case of Fill the Boot, <clears throat> that, you know, that is something that, you know, that takes place between vehicle and uh, someone standing, standing in the, in the uh, right of way. Okay, uh, Supervisor Stork, uh, Supervisor Faust, Supervisor Smith, and then Supervisor Herity. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I, I concur with the comments that have been made. And I, the only thing I would ask that be part of this is that um, some sort of content-neutral permit process. I mean, if, if the federal government can have permits for parades and lots of different things, we ought to be able to have a permit process that might be able to address this, and I would look for something that, that we could address along those lines of a content-neutral process to do that. So I would just make sure, want to make sure that that's part of the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Faust. And Supervisor Linda Smith. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, this might not be a good idea, but it is an idea. I'm just curious whenever you bring it back uh, whether there are, whether you can have an ordinance that allows for, uh, you know, uh, a holiday from enforcement where you would actually declare that the, you know, for a particular period of time, say a weekend in September, uh, that <laughs> yeah, the ordinance was not effective. Weekend. Supervisor Linda Smith. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I think most of us have seen that this is the panhandling is it's becoming more prevalent yeah. and on more and more roads in the county. And frankly, they typically are the busiest roads because that has <laughs> they have the most cars going by and, and to uh, panhandle. Uh, and again, I see it daily at Nutley and Lee Highway. And we're going, I mean, this is going to be part of the I-66 project coming soon. We have road construction projects all over creation as well. And this is just another complication, a safety issue to have panhandlers out there when people are trying to figure out where the road has moved to. But we are also seeing it in Tyson's and on Route 7, and that's the middle of eight lanes of road and people have complained about the, you know, the fact that it isn't safe for people to be out there. And no matter what you say, they had to get out there by walking through the road. So there's, uh, it is an issue, and we need to deal with it. And I have been seeing the firefighters more and more over on the sidewalk, which is a good thing because I've had citizens concerned about the safety of the firefighters out in the median as well. Our roads are just too busy, and people are too easily distracted. It really is a safety issue. Thank you. 
Supervisor Herity. Yes, and, and you know, muscular dystrophy is a horrible disease, and, and what we do, our fire department does, is important. But like the Winchester Fire Department, I think there are probably other ways, and I think as a part of this, maybe we ask the fire department to look at what some of the other options are and maybe bring those to the table on the 17th. But uh, it, it, that is obviously the, the elephant in the room, so to speak, in terms of of moving forward with this, but I think it is important that we move forward to it just for our, for our community, for our safety. Um, I did uh, lean over and ask the uh, county attorney. She could be ready to discuss the legal aspects of this in closed session on June 30, if we, July 30, July 30 <laughs> sorry, July 30, if she, if we, if we so choose, but I, I think that might be something we would want to do in preparation for the 17th get the legal brief because they have been looking at this um, the other thing I would add is you know si signage on panhandling is something other jurisdictions have also done and it might be something that we uh, bring to the table on the 17th to look at s some of the options but uh, I, I think this is important I, I hear a lot about it um, I think it's a growing problem and and it's 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 not the people in need that it's it's the the rings that we've got that are and, and that's what we're seeing in the majority of our our districts I think is the rings and they're taking advantage of the generosity of our of our people who think they're really helping people and what they're really doing is just the opposite um, they're encouraging bad behavior and we need to get that fixed okay so we have a motion uh, and that is uh, for staff to uh, see you know what they can do to bring an ordinance for our consideration given some of the discussion that we have just had and for us to have that discussion at the uh, public safety committee meeting on September the 17th and I'll ask uh, if we can have some discussion in closed session as early as uh, the 30th of July uh, we'll have to see see what other it, what other things are on the, you know, on the plate at that time, and if indeed we're we're ready to have that discussion. I just yes, wanted to clarify that the the motion was to to bring a draft ordinance forward. Right. Yep. Understand okay. that. Okay. If there is no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That motion carries.